Hey YouTube, today we've sprung a leak in Bricktown, so let's get building. Hey everyone and welcome to Brick Talk TV. In today's episode we're heading back to Bricktown in the Street Story episode where we've sprung a leak and we need to build some roadworks to fix the leak. If you haven't seen the previous episodes of Bricktown Rebuild then do check out the playlist in the top right and also remember to smack that like button and subscribe if you want to continue to keep up to date with the rebuild. Here we have Bricktown as we left it last time. We just completed adding the light railway foundations and today we're going to recreate a roadwork scene on one of the sidewalks. And as always I've mapped out the look of the scene we're going to build in Bricklink Studio so I can work out the parts we need. So let's head over to the studio and check out our plans. So here is our model, we're going to be building the actual hole in the sidewalks and some props that we can place around the hole to recreate a roadwork scene. We're also going to be building a fountain of water that's springing out of the hole to recreate a water main beam burst. The background of this street story is that the road workers have been working away and accidentally hit a water main that has caused the water to gush out into a fountain. You can see we're adding some details of pipes in the hole, as well as adding some one by one round plates around the hole to show some signs of mud being dug out. We're also going to be building some roadblocks and street cones as well so that we can build a proper scene with a hole surrounded by roadblocks with cones around to warn people about the danger. In the final scene we've also added a few workmen that are hanging around the incident having sprung the leak and taking a look at all the water gushing out. So let's head over to the Lego room and build some of the parts that we need ready for Bricktown. First up we'll build the four roadblocks. We'll do two in real time and then speed up our second two. First up we need two 1x2 jumper tiles in yellow. Then we'll add a yellow 1x1 plate on top of the jumper tiles. Next we need 1x1 yellow brick and we'll add this on top of the 1x1 plate we just added to the jumper tile. Once these are in place, we'll add a yellow 1x1 Erling brick on top of the 1x1 brick. Now we have the two posts for the roadblock, we just need to connect them and to do that we'll use this printed 1x6 yellow tile with black diagonal lines on and we'll connect the post via the Erling brick to the end of each of these tiles. To finish off the look of the roadblock, we'll add two 1x1 round plates in trans orange colour to the top of each post to act as a warning light that would flash on top of our roadblock. That's our first one done, now let's run through that one more time in real time before we speed up the other two. So first up again we need two 1x2 jumper tiles in yellow and then we'll add a yellow 1x1 plate on top of the jumper tile. Next we need a 1x1 yellow brick and we'll add that to the top of the 1x1 plate we just added. Once these are in place, we'll add a yellow 1x1 Erling brick to the top of the 1x1 brick. Now we have the two posts for the roadblocks, we need to connect them and to do that, we'll add this 1x6 yellow printed tile with diagonal black lines and connect each end of this tile to the Erling bricks that we've added to the posts. To finish this off, we'll add two 1x1 one one round trans orange colour plates on top of each post, again to act as some warning lights on top of each post for the roadblock. Now that's two of them built, let's build the other two in quick time. the other two created you can also see a Lego minifigure rested up against the barrier as a comparison for what the height will look like. Next up we're going to build some traffic cones and we'll be able to place these around our roadwork scene. 
will be placing them on the road and the pavement itself to warn pedestrians. For these we're going to need 9 orange cones and we'll need 9 one by one white plates to act as the base of the cone. To create the cone we'll add the one by one plate to the bottom of the cone pieces. I've decided on white plates here but of course you can use any colour. You could use orange to continue the orange theme or maybe black depending on the look you're going for. But I chose to use white for this one. Next up we're going to need to replace the base plate under the paving foundations as we're going to be able to see the hole from the top. So I've opted for a brown plate of 8x16 in size. This will give the idea that there's mud underneath the paving areas. We're going to add some 1x1 dark bluish grey plates with clips into position. Into the clips we'll add two full length rods, one in yellow and one in blue. This is to give the appearance of pipes under the ground. Once we've placed these in the town, we may need to move some of the positioning of these so they look correct inside the hole. Now the base is done, we'll move on to building the fountain of water that's coming out of the hole. This is going to consist of various one by one round, transparently coloured plates. So first up we'll connect the main trunk of the fountain. We'll top the main fountain with some 1x2 plates in trans blue colour to give us a point to attach further trunks of water going in different directions. We'll add some more round plates onto these plates and we'll also add this angled bar piece here which will allow us to have the water going into more extreme different directions. Once we have the two sides completed, you can see we'll finish off the main trunk of water with some more 1x1 one one round trans blue plates and clear plates and we'll top it off with a flame in blue colour to give an effect of water. You can see here how it will roughly look once it's placed inside the hole. And that's going to be the last mini build that we'll need to create before we go and set the scene. So let's head over now to Bricktown and start deconstructing the current sidewalk before rebuilding it to create this scene. Here we are in Bricktown and originally when I set up the studio design file we were going to place the roadworks here outside the Daily Bugle but given how busy this part of town is with various superheroes and villains flying around we're actually going to move our street story over to this part of town. So let's get building. First we need to deconstruct this area and swap out the base plate underneath which happens to be mid azure at the moment which definitely would have looked a bit weird if we were able to see through the hole into the bottom of this foundation plate. Now that's swapped out and I've replaced it with our brown plate, we can start to replace the surrounding curbs and supporting plates that give the foundations for our sidewalks.
We'll also need to add some wedges here to create our sidewalk hole. We use dark bluish grey plates here to give us the edges as they'll still be visible once we start to tile over our sidewalk. Now we just need to fill in the remaining plates and bear in mind we will tile over these plates in the future to improve the look of the sidewalk. You can see the pipes coming through still and now we can start to add in our spout of water. We can now see how this will look with our cones and barriers in place. Now we'll quickly remove the barriers and cones to add some of our one by one round plates to add some details of mud being dug out of the hole. Then we'll add back our workers, barriers, cones. And we'll take a look at our finished effect of a bursting water main in the city. I think this looks pretty effective now and we'll keep it as it is for today. In a future episodes, once we start to tile this sidewalk and we cover up the plates, it'll add a better effect in terms of the water bursting out of the hole and we may add some more tweaks to it in the future but we'll leave this for now as it is in Bricktown. If you enjoyed this episode then do hit that like button so more people get to see it and hit that subscribe button for future episodes in this series. You can join me next time when we're going to be adding some drop curbs in front of the fire station modular building and the Ghostbuster firehouse so that the vehicles have access to the road. And we'll also have another street story coming up around the train station. So until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then.